The salary cap is going up. More changes in Canucks management and World Junior Camp news. That's part all of the hockey podcast for Friday, December the 10th. Started off as a PG podcast, but then Devin just kept on dropping shits and fucks. And I'm just trying to figure out what's in her mouth. I just want to see him interview Francesco Acoli. You no, know, he's he's a good human being, is what he would say about himself. I'm sure. Who's hosting this thing? <laughs> yeah. you take charge, Kevin. What's your Jesus? First time we ever met those guys. That was the 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 major uh, drunken pub argument. I think you guys are the worst. I'm gonna have to probably watch some Canucks hockey, unfortunately. Just making making friends left, right, and center, and probably some enemies as well. And tell him to shut up. He needs to hear that every once in a while. Off to a good start. All right. We are live. It's okay to talk when it goes live. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hockey Podcast News Pack for Friday, December the 10th. You can, of course, follow us on Twitter at podcast underscore hockey, facebook.com, the hockey podcast, youtube.com, the hockey podcast. Wow. And reminder, of course, also that you can subscribe to the audio wherever you get your audio as well, as we have our draw to win tickets to uh, the Vancouver Canucks playing the Calgary Flames at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. In April, uh, you have a chance to meet uh, Sean, Devin, and Chris uh, of, with a partnership with the Pig and Duke, with the Pig and Puck contest. You get food and drink at the Pig and Duke, hang out with Sean, Devin, and Chris, limo to the game, and then enjoy that game, the Vancouver Canucks and the Calgary Flames in action there as well. So we'll get into the news of the day here. And, of course, Gary Bettman spoke again to the media today. We'll, so we'll start there in terms of some of the news that came out of there. And the salary cap uh, is going to rise as the uh, hockey-related revenue uh, has went up to and is going to be projected to $5.2 billion. The salary cap will rise from 81.5 million to 82.5 million, million next year. Um, also, as the NHL says, the player's $1 billion debt to owners is expected to pay off, be paid off in three seasons as part of, of course, COVID, and including this one, at which point the salary cap can be relinked to HRR, hockey-related revenue, and rise dramatically. Uh, so... Uh, we should be, according to Frank Cervelli and the reports out there, we should be expecting a rise in salary cap throughout the next couple of seasons, which helps probably will help a number of teams uh, with that as well, as that has been a big question going forward to, to this. Uh, and as we go through here uh, other news uh in terms of the olympics uh batman did also talk about that today and he says that will be a player's decision if the uh, players wish to go uh they're uh batman and and the ownership has admitted that they they were not for going to the olympics uh this has been always been a, a player's idea uh and uh, as of today, according to a tweet from Nick Kostionka, uh, Daly said the NHL does not have certainty on protocols in China if a player tests positive for COVID-19. Uh, Bettman also said that the NHL's concern about the Olympics have been magnified by COVID-19. And ultimately, the NHL will honor its commitment to the players to go to the Beijing if that's what they want to do. So uh, NHL basically saying it's in your, the ball is in your court. You go, we'll support you. You don't, we'll don't. So the, a remaining fluid situation. Uh, the deadline for that is, uh, to next to plan is January the 10th. So we're a month away from that, from that very decision going on there as well. Uh, as far as the Arizona, Arizona Coyotes uh, go, that has been a, of course, a topic of discussion. Uh, Bettman talked about it today. Uh, Bettman said that they are not going, the Coyotes are not going anywhere, uh, are not leaving it. Well, they're leaving Arizona, they're leaving that arena, but they're not leaving the Arizona area area. 
They are working on a new plan for an arena in Tempe. They have paid their debts with Glendale. And uh, Bettman said basically there's no uh, issue with that. Uh, there was a, uh, the Bettman said that the recent report stating that the Coyotes owed $1.3 million in unpaid taxes and bills to the city of Gl- Glendale, uh, were a result of a, a miscommunication. Uh, however, the city of Gl- Glendale has told the Coyotes it will not extend their lease agreement to play at the arena beyond the season, possibly leaving them of course without a home for next season. So there, that is what's in question, but the intention from the NHL's perspective at this point uh, that is at this point that they are planning to stay in the Arizona area and are looking at right now an arena in Tempe. Uh, so moving on to the Vancouver Canucks, they are in uh, action to get to the, tonight uh, against the Winnipeg Jets. And we will get into uh, the use in terms of more management. Of course, Jim Rutherford is now president of hockey operations and uh, officially listed as interim general manager. Uh, but as of this morning, some more changes have happened as uh, executive director of hockey operations, Jonathan Wall and assistant general manager have been, uh, according to a tweet from John Thomas Drance, confirmed by others, have been dismissed. And they will be... Uh, this, according to uh, continuing the report, the decision uh, to dismiss Gear and Wall were in the works before Rutherford was hired. So, unknown what is the next steps on this situation, but um, Jim Rutherford put in his stamp in, or the plan was already in works. Again, the com- communication in terms of what is going on, they're a little bit confusing, but we do know a couple more. Uh, new faces will be in Vancouver Canuck management. Uh, staying on the ice, Travis Hamanick, uh left the game on uh, Wednesday as uh, the Canucks are going for their first three-game winning streak of the year. He's been placed on inter- injured reserve. We talked about that yesterday. According to head coach Bruce Boudreaux, Hamanick will be out two to three weeks. He is expecting Oliver ekman Larson to be in the lineup uh, he had a lineup for about a week. So, uh, just as terms of what we're expecting in terms of lineups, uh, here, according to today, uh, it looks like it will be, uh, the fence pairings, Luke Shen with Quinn Hughes, Tyler Myers with Tucker Pullman, Kyle Burrows with Brad Hunt, the lines, Miller, Pearson and Besser, Horvat Dickinson and Hoaglander, Lamico Mott and Chason, Pedersen, Pod Colson, and Garland. Uh, looks like Eric uh, Comrie will start in goal for the Winnipeg Jets tonight as they are uh, as they are in a back-to-back situation. Connor Hellebuck getting the shutout yesterday against the Seattle Kraken. Uh, other injury news that is going on here. Uh, the New Jersey Devils and John are concerned about Jonathan Bernier. Uh, it's uh, he's been dealing with a, he's been out indefinitely, uh, and he was placed on injured reserve Friday due to a hip injury. Uh, Bernier, 33 years old, he signed a two-year $8.25 million contract at the end of July. Um, he's 4-4-1 with a 3.06 goals against average, 902 save percentage. His last game was last Friday, December the 3rd, in an 8-4 loss on the Winnipeg Jets. He allowed six goals and 32 shots. Um, Lindy Ruff's head coach said, we're concerned about the long-term health and where this is going to go and where we'll end up going forward. So he, yes, he is worried and very concerned. Uh, so we'll see what happens there to Jonathan Bernier. Casey Middlestat for the Buffalo Sabres also is injured. Uh, he is, he has been, uh, he had surgery Friday. It's an undisclosed injury. He is expected to return this season. Uh, he left in the uh, game that everybody is talking about, uh, the Anaheim Ducks 2 nothing win over Buffalo because of the Trevor Zegers Sunday Milano goal. Uh, so as Sabres coach Don Granado says, they don't have a timetable yet on his return. Uh, some other returns going on. Malcolm Subban, just to stick with the Sabres there, he participated in practice this Friday. And it's the first time his 
He has uh, skated since last Saturday, December the 4th, with an undisclosed injury in his Sabres debut. Um, Nazem Kadri will not play tonight against the Detroit Red Wings. He is day-to-day with a lower body injury. Uh, and Peter Morazic is expected to start with the Maple Leafs against Chicago on Saturday. He, uh, he had a conditioning shit stint with the Toronto Marlies. Uh, he allowed four goals and 26 shots on Sunday in a 5-1 loss to Lavelle. But Brazic said he is feeling good. And so in ter- uh, Tampa Bay, going to Tampa Bay here, Eric Chernak is week to week for the Lightning and won't, won't play until after Christmas. Uh, that He's been listed day to day with a lower body injury, but that's now been moved to week to week. Uh, and the Oilers will have Chris Russell out a week with an upper body injury. He was injured in yesterday's 3-2 loss against the Boston Bruins. And Alexander Holt has been loaned to the New Swedish national team. Uh, the Devils have done that. He was the seventh pick in the 2020 uh, draft. Two assists in six games with the Devils this season. And we t- that so that is also going on there. Now, some World Junior news here we need to touch on. Uh, as... The selection camp opened yesterday, minus four players, uh, including one that will not participate. Defenseman Jack Thompson uh, has been disinvited because of COVID-19 protocols. He was one of 35 players. He uh, he plays with the Sudbury Wolves. Uh, the Wolves uh, actually suspended team activities November 30th. They had a dozen positive tests, uh, if you remember. And they are not resuming hockey games until December 16th. Uh, also, University of Michigan forward uh, Kent Johnson, his arrival was delayed because of COVID issues. Uh, he'll join the Can- he'll join the team in pre-competition camp in Banff, uh, and as well. Uh, so, Hockey Canada needed Thompson and Johnson to quarantine for 14 days, and uh, also Peterborough's Pete's forward Mason McTavish and Charlottetown Islanders defenseman Lucas Cormier did not skate on Thursday. Uh, of course, that tournament begins on Boxing Day. And then finally, the other news of today, just to follow up on the WHL draft, uh, and you know, we uh, just as a shameless plug, check the dubnetwork.ca for draft recrubs as well as Area 51, uh, as well sports. They uh, they have done some as writing there as well. But the uh, Tri-City Americans have officially announced that Jordan Gavin, the second pick of that draft, of course, uh, Berkeley Cotton was the first pick from the uh, for the Spokane Chiefs. Jordan Gavin was the second pick, and he has signed his WHL standard player agreement with the Americans. Uh, I think the Tri-City Americans will hope to get him in when, as soon as it's possibly safe. So that is the news for today. Again, follow us on Twitter. Uh, follow us individually. We have our uh, podcasts to retweet our pod clips. Uh, go, uh, follow us again on Twitter. You can follow Sean, Beardy Canuck 3 Chris is Schneids, S-C-H-N-A-I-D-Z. Tyler is T-N-O-B-L-E. Devin Gordhow 9 I-N-K-E-V-O-L-E. Facebook.com, The Hockey Podcast. YouTube.com, The Hockey Podcast. Uh, and then subscribe to wherever you get your audio. We'll be back all together on Monday. Uh, for our podcast. And uh, until then, we will talk to you all very soon. Bye for now.